Hi, welcome everyone to this Thursday night's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. And speaking of waters, it's rising out there, I'll tell you that much. There has been just nonstop, seems like nonstop rain every time you turn around. But I tell you what, tonight's show, we wanted to make this a special show for you. I wanted the weather to cooperate just a little bit. But I will tell you this, as soon as the sun comes out for two or three days and the water clears up, you're going to want to start using this equipment right here because this is going to load your boat. This is some of the best fishing you're ever going to have all year long coming up here in the next, I would say if the sun comes out and, and gets warm a little bit, this will be the, the best time you've ever had out on the water. And, and with me tonight, I've got a good, good friend of mine. You've seen him before. We can't drive this home hard enough for you to have such a good time. And that is Jeff Hill with Mad Dad Lures. Let's broaden out. Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, you too. All right, but Hey, I am not telling a fib. I am telling them the truth. Swim bait, a rig, um... Tennessee rig, all that is going to be in Over the next. The top. It's going to be <laughs> next two or three months. It's going to be on you. And I think it's going to start real soon. I mean, right after this water, when this water clears up and it gets a little stable, I think it's going to be on. Oh yeah, it will be. There ain't no doubt. Because the shad have already started moving. Yeah, they but, have. But I believe with the with the when you've got water that is. Low temperature water mm -hmm. and it's muddy. Mm -hmm. It's hard to fish in it. Oh but yeah, that's true. As soon as that clears up, as soon as that water temp rises just mm -hmm. a little bit, those fish have got to eat. Oh yeah, a lot of them fish has done and moved up, you know, um, into shallow water. I and mean, the bait fish, there. they're right up in there. Now I gotta say, you just went out with Casey Martin last I did. weekend I did. And on Gunnersville. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you because you guys loaded the boat. Yes, we had a really good. We had a really good day. Caught a lot of fish on uh, swim bait. Caught a lot of fish on uh, a rig, um, chatter bait. Oh yeah, that thing there's a killer. That is, when you put that it is on a there, killer. I, you know I heard huh? bass from a miles away <laughs> hollering. <laughs> that is a killer. <laughs> but now, now Guntersville hasn't had the rains like we have. Uh, not nearly. As well, bad. yeah, but it's still the water's been water's been real murky. But still, it, because you got bait, a lot of water coming down from the north, you know, coming through the Tennessee yeah, you're River, right, you're right, you know, you're and it right. still dirtied it up a lot. But y'all still wound up. What did y'all think? 28, 29 pounds. Oh yeah, easy. Each, easy. each one of you got easy. But we still had to go to, uh, you know, a, a color that was gonna, you know, had to go to chartreuse and white, yeah. where they could really see it. Where they could know. see the flash. Yeah. The indigo color or the blue, you know, with pearl belly, it wasn't working. You know, had to go to the. You had to go with something Pearl, that flashes. Yep, yeah, had to. Now, when the water clears up, say on Old Hickory, Percy mm -hmm, Priest, mm -hmm. Gunnersville, Chickamauga, and all that, what colors would you think? Uh, I call it an indigo color. You know, this color here, it's a blue chartreuse with I'm a pearl belly. Can we get a close up of that, guys? Yeah. Now, that's what you call an indigo. Indigo. Okay. And it's got a real predominant blue, but it's not. Overbearing. Right. It's, it's almost it's a blue a, yeah. purple. It's got a little bit like of a, a purple cast when yeah. the sun's shining on it. Chartreuse mid, white belly. Uh, this is this is awesome. This is an awesome rig. Now oh, yeah. I want to point out everybody you, you, you hear about the swim baits all the time, but if you can do a swim bait like that and that tail doubles over and I'm in touching itself. Yes, at least halfway of the bait. Uh it's got some action. Oh yeah. Now this one comes with the hook and the weight embedded. It does. It's got a, a nine aught gamagatsu hook with a three quarter ounce weight. So this bad boy, you're you throw this in a country mile. Oh here. yeah. Plus you can get down in them ledges, you know, like on Kentucky Lake, Gunnersville Lake, twenty five, you know, thirty foot of water. You can get it down there and slow it down, and it stays down there real good. Okay, I'm gonna ask a silly question right now, and that is. This bait's eight inches or seven and a half? Seven and a half. Seven and a half inches. Should I be throwing this in the next couple of weeks? Uh, I would probably hold off until, you know, really May, April. Okay. Is, you know, when them fish are starting to come off of bed, they're hungry. They're hungry. They're going to they're gonna be after that big one. What should we be throwing? What should our viewers be thinking about throwing in the next couple of weeks? Well, I'd be... 
either throwing an A-rig, you know, with uh, four and a half okay. or five inch baits. Okay. Uh, that's an A-rig there that I make too. Um, you know, on quarter ounce heads. You know, it depends on your lake, you know. Yeah. Uh, whether you know depth of where where you want to be at. You know, now but. this is a true Alabama rig. It has five hooks on it. Now Tennessee, you can't do that. You exactly. can only have three, so you can only have three hooks, two dummies. Right. I wonder if they count the guy in the boat like me a dummy. <laughs> 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 I've always wanted to ask them that. But, you know, this is awesome that they. Uh, now this is a true Alabama rig. It has five hooks. Tennessee, I reiterate, you can only use three. Three hooks in Tennessee, exactly. and two of them have to be dummies. Mm -hmm. Great flash to these things that that you use. You're mimicking a ball of shad. Exactly, you are. Now, where would they be concentrating, Jeff? I mean, come on, you, you and Casey did pretty are you well. You talking with about them. where the fish concentrate? Yeah, where are they going to be right now? Just uh, close to. Well, they're going to be moving up. You know, it's different on every lake. Like I said, you know, if you're in Gunnersville, you know, they're going to be moving up in a lot of hydrilla, uh, 10, 12, 14 foot of water, you know, right in front of a spawning, flat, a spawning area. Uh, that's where most of your big fish are going to be caught right now. Well, you know, uh, creek arms. I was going to ask you, there's the a lot of ditches in oh, South yeah. Salty, North Salty, that area. Exactly. Uh, uh, around Goose Pond. Mm -hmm. Is that, can you throw, is that where you'd be throwing one of these? Oh, yeah. Right yeah. down the middle of that ditch. Yeah, or right off, uh, you know, like you're going into South Saudi right there, you know, there's a big flat off to your left. Yeah. That's a perfect A rig, you know, 10, 12 foot of water coming to the channel. You know, them fish like to uh, stack up right along there, you know, because right behind them is a spawning flat. That's right. You know, and there's a lot of tournaments won right there going into South Saudi on the left hand side for that quarter of a mile stretch. That's that's where you can, you get your arm broke right there. Now <laughs> while we're on Gunnersville, while mm -hmm. we're on Gunnersville, I want to ask you because uh, uh, Skeet Reese and them mm -hmm. made it so popular last year uh, at some of the BASS tournaments that throwing where it funnels down to a bridge. And I know that South Salty and North Salty both have bridges. They do. And a lot of riprap, and, but you're catching those fish, you're funneling them through a smaller creek or, or ditch or whatever you might Well, want usually to what happens there um, is a lot of your bait fish will concentrate. They'll come to them bridges because the pylons, the concrete pylons, warm the water up Okay. because it catches heat. Right. So a lot of your bait fish come there. Well, your bass, your crappie, they're going to follow, you know, and they're going to be hanging around those bridges because there's a lot of bait concentration around there. So that's where the, the, the big girls are going to hang out for oh, a little yeah. while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's some good ones. All for right. Sure. We're going to save some of the, more of this info. We're going to take a quick break, pay some of our bills around here, <laughs> and when we come back, we're talking about more great, great swim bait action on your local lake. Hurry back to more. So was it one.